Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Meet Touchstone Essentials Live. And tonight is our very first Meet Touchstone Essentials Live product training. And I'm here with Cindy Clement, uh, our guest speaker for tonight. And I, well, I say guest speaker, you're going to be the featured speaker uh, for all of these product trainings. And we're excited to have Cindy. Uh, let me introduce Cindy. Uh, if you'll go to the next slide, Cindy, we want to mm -hmm. make sure that people see you and know who you are and what a treat it is to have you with us. Cindy Clement, by the way, is a dear friend of mine. I've known her for, I can say decades. I know, Craig. <laughs> it's been a long time, but Cindy is fantastic. Uh, she has been around the uh, natural health industry uh, for 40 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, she's an herbalist. She is a nutritionist. She's got a master's degree in nutrition. She's a board certified nutritionist. Uh, she is an accredited master health educator. Uh, Cindy does it all. She knows it all. One of the things that Cindy has done recently is she's written this book on environmental chemical burden, your body's environmental chemical burden. And it's a fantastic book. And it's received a lot of awards. I've been impressed by that. If you go to Cindy's website, cindyclement.com, you can see all of the, the awards that this book has received. It's absolutely amazing what you've done, Cindy. Thank you. Uh, and we're so excited to have Cindy here. And I'm excited um, more than this. I mean, this is just the first night, but we're going, to, we're going to be able to learn from Cindy twice a month on Thursday evenings. You'll see the uh, schedule um, on, the, on the Meet Touchstone Essentials Live page. And uh, we're meeting again on the 27th this month, uh, but twice a month. Uh, on Thursday evenings, you're going to be able to learn from Cindy. And I'm absolutely delighted to have you here, Cindy. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. I'm going to turn the time over to you and let you do your thing. You got it, Craig. Hello, everybody. It's it's wonderful to be here. Um, as Craig mentioned, we've got this wonderful webinar series that we've been planning that's going to help to raise awareness, not only about our toxic body burden, but how we really have to use... Um, that, that idea of detox, build, and then balance. And I want to take you back to a quote I heard about a decade ago. And the Dr. Judith S. Stern, and she's a, uh, a, a distinguished professor emeritus at the University of California, Davis. And what she said was, genetics loads the gun, but our environment pulls the trigger. In other words, think about your ancestors and all of these diseases and genes that you may have inherited. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to follow in their footsteps. What it means is that you've got that in your, in your genes, you've got that in your DNA. But if you choose a different path, if you're detoxing, if you're building, if you are balancing the body, even though your gun is loaded, the genetics are loading the gun, the environment isn't going to pull that trigger on your health. And what triggers that, that pulls that trigger, I should say, are stress and toxins, your inactivity, if you're not moving your body, negative thinking, a poor diet, things like that. So these are the things we want to talk about in this webinar series and really give you a chance to understand how the products work, how your body works, and then how you can share this information with other people. Now, let's start with detox. And what I want you to know is that the healthcare systems are not trained at this point to address the contribution that environmental contaminants have on our body, on the health of our body. They are not trained. The field is called environmental medicine, and it's currently in its infancy. In fact, many of the clinicians are not even aware of the science behind toxicant bioaccumulation or the related health consequences for that matter, they're not even, uh, 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 don't even have an understanding of how or where their patients are being exposed. So folks, your education begins tonight because you're not going to get this from your physicians. Again, not their fault. They weren't trained 
and that this field of, of medicine is in its infancy. So tonight, you are getting your new self-education, and throughout this series, we will continue to give you this information hoping that you will share this with others and especially the millennials. And as I go on and on through these presentations, I'm going to really emphasize how important it is for you to bring these young folks in to what you're all about. Folks, no one is immune to this exposure. I pretty much changed my life. I call it my previous life. In the mid 1970s, I started to really follow. Many of you may know the name Dr. Bernard Jensen. And he was teaching us about colon cleansing and fasting and drinking herbal teas and eating healthy and eating rainbow colored foods. And he was, oh my goodness, so influential. And we would all um, three different states at a time would meet in, in Ohio, in Toledo, Ohio, and he would come on stage and the room was full of people just wanting to learn more and more about health. So he was very influential in my life. And so I was very, very serious about keeping chemicals away from my body. But unbeknownst to me, I still had these chemicals in my body. Um, as, I, as I became interested in this toxic, uh, toxic environment, I decided to have a body burden test done. And for me to show up in the 80th percentile on some of these chemicals and the 95th percentile on some of these other chemicals was just mind boggling to me, a person that had been organic and, and really not using toxic products at all. So what I want you to understand is that it's not just in our bodies. These toxicants are in our environment. They're in our food. They're in our products. That's probably how they get into our body, right? But I'm especially concerned for this millennial generation because they will face hardships as a result of this worldwide environmental chemical contamination. The concerns in the scientific community are mounting that exposure to different classes of chemicals and their breakdown products are actually enhancing the toxicity and intensifying the effects of these chemicals in both our bodies and in the environment. So some of the unknown sources that I realized after I did this study and found myself in these high categories, this 95th percentile, an air popper that my father had purchased in the 1970s for me. I don't eat a lot of popcorn, but, you know, 50 years later, I found out that the packaging, that plastic packaging and how it heated up. It was transferring chemicals into the popcorn I was eating. And likewise, the plastic hair dryers and, and things like fish and leafy greens and dairy. And the, the, the list just went on and on. And then I had clients. Interestingly, and this takes us back to that, uh, that the, uh, the branch of environmental medicine is in its infancy, because I had a Korean couple come to me and they complained of a burning in their throat, a burning in their throat and esophagus. And they had undergone quite a lot of medical testing. And pretty much they came up with these people have GERD and they're experiencing that acid reflux. But as I talked to these people and talked to them, their Prilosec wasn't working. Their Nexium wasn't working. So I was thinking, what could it be? And I kept probing and asking questions because I knew in the back of my mind, it's gotta be environmental. What I found is that every night it was customary for them after they prepared dinner to completely wipe down the counters with bleach, with Clorox bleach. So they were breathing these fumes on a daily basis. And that's what the burning was. Um, people that break out in hives, they have no idea what's happening. Most often it is either a stressor or it's artificial sweeteners and artificial colors. So the more you learn, you're gonna be able to help these people. People that sneeze and wheeze because they bought a Christmas tree, right? So all of the pesticides on those Christmas trees, it's not the Christmas tree, it's the pesticides. So as I began learning about all of this, I became very passionate about wanting to share it. 
So the big question is, is detox just a one-time thing? Are you going to detox? And then that's it. We used to believe that back in the 70s, but in the year 2009, the World Health Organization made a statement because their data estimated that 40%, 40% of human deaths around the world each year had some part of the environmental factors included in that. So the groups that were of the highest exposure were infants, children, the elderly, those who worked in industry, and then also pregnant and lactating women were also in a vulnerable group. So we've got a lot going on here with these people, but let's back up a bit because it was in 1976, a long time ago, that over 60,000 chemicals were grandfathered in when our U.S. Congress passed something called the Toxic Substances Control Act. That was 1976, 60,000 chemicals. As of 2010, 17,000 of those chemicals that were, they're grandfathered in are still in use and many of them still have questionable safety ratings. And it doesn't stop there. An estimated two thousand new chemicals are introduced into our consumer products, our foods, our environment every single year in the U.S. And currently there are about 83,000 different chemicals being released into our environment. Now there's a group of, of medical physicians that specialize with children and collectively they call themselves the Pediatric Academic Societies plural, because it's so many different groups. And what they're speculating now is that these low level of toxic chemicals, low levels are impacting not only the functioning of our current generation of children, but some of those people or some of those scientists and researchers and practitioners in that academic society they actually believe that this, it, the exposure that these children are receiving today is going to not only affect their generation, but the future generations as well. So is detox just a one-time thing? No. These toxicants tend to bioaccumulate in our body, find a fat cell or an organ area that's fatty and deposit that chemical into that area. Most of these chemicals are known as forever chemicals. So one of the stories I like to tell is that when I was a child in the very early 1950s, we had a drive-in theater. We lived in the country and in, in Michigan, there are a lot of mosquitoes in the summertime. And yet we wanted to go to the drive-in theater. That was the big thing. Well, we would get to the drive-in theater. It was called the Commerce Drive-In. We would go in and just before the movie would start, when it started to become dusk, a big truck with a huge tank on the back of it would go up and down every aisle of cars in the drive-in theater and spray this fog. And what it was, was the chemical DDT, a very toxic, chemical that was later banned because it was so deadly. Do you know folks that age at age 67, DDT was still in my system? And that's what's known as a forever chemical, a bioaccumulation of chemicals in our body. And remember, that's just a single chemical. One of the challenges to the research is that humans aren't just exposed to one single chemical, but rather a mixture of pollutants from multiple chemical classes and sources. So when we've got millions of these chemical com uh, compounds existing around the globe, these regulatory codes can only monitor a fraction of them. So our exposure continues with both uh, humans and the environment. Now, one other thing, I want to talk to you about uh, chemical um, sensitivities or food intolerances or what we call acquired allergies. 
A lot of them develop in response to toxicant exposure. So for instance, when I was, I call it my previous life before I got healthy, I had severe allergies. I was allergic to 180 out of 200 things that my allergist tested me for. 180 out of 2,000 things, or 200 things. And what the allergist said was, Cindy, you're just allergic to earth. Well, I wasn't allergic to earth. I was very toxic. So as I went through my, my new life of nutrition and detoxing and doing all the right things, I can tell you folks today, I'm allergic to absolutely nothing. All of those environmental allergies, the animal allergies, the food allergies, they're gone. So the condition what is uh, with this chemical sensitivity and these food intolerances, and I'm not saying that a peanut allergy or a very severe food allergy is simply toxins. That's not what I'm saying. But when you have a body like mine that was reactive to everything, there's a condition and they, they use the acronym TILT, T-I-L-T. It stands for Toxicant Induced Loss of Tolerance toxicant induced loss of tolerance. And when you undergo detoxification, you can help to improve those symptoms. So some of the symptoms are a bad breath or body odors or gas or bloating, uh, maybe some sleep disruptions or that brain fog. Maybe there's excessive weight or fluid retention in the body, oh, headaches and neck pain and body pain. Sometimes heartburn is one of those symptoms. Infertility, a low interest in sex, um, irritable bowels or foul smelling stools. The list goes on and on. So by helping to detox, we can really clean up the body. Um, it's critical when we are planning a family, when a young couple decides they're going to think about starting a family. This is one of the topics, detoxification, that has to have serious consideration because what we know is these toxicants really are transferred through pregnancy and through breastfeeding, the woman's body transfers that into the, the developing infant. Oh my goodness. So 17 years ago, there was research that revealed the average number of chemicals found in the umbilical cord blood registered at the average infant, 287 different chemicals coming into this world, brand new baby all those toxicants in their body. That means that children begin living their lives in the womb exposed to an average of 180 toxicants that are carcinogenic, cancer causing in humans. Uh, 208 chemicals that cause abnormal development and about 217 of those chemicals are toxic to the brain and nervous system. So after the womb, of course, children continue to have those unique pathways to exposure that's different from adults because they drink breast milk or formula. They use hand uh, to or object to mouth exploration. They live lower to the ground. So they have uh, different breathing zones, but also, in addition to all of that, their ability to metabolize and detoxify and excrete toxins is still developing. So who can detox and who can't? Well, first of all, um, who can't? Those who are pregnant and nursing should not detox because again, when you are mobilizing those toxicants and getting them back into the bloodstream, they will be passed on. So my message is get them detoxed before pregnancy and not just the females. We've got to detox the young men as well. Now, if somebody is terribly weak and terribly sick, it's more important to build at that time, build and balance until their organs are strong enough. If you've got somebody very weak and you start uh, mobilizing toxicants and trying to get them through uh, detoxification organs that are congested, it's only going to make the matters worse. So we'll go through that in our webinar series, but who else can detox? Everybody else, especially those undergoing weight loss. Because as I mentioned, these 
uh, fat soluble toxins are stored in fat cells. So when a person loses weight and the fat cells shrink, these toxicants are reintroduced into the bloodstream and are recirculating through the body. So we really want to work, especially with people who are planning a, a family, those who are uh, employed in industry, those who want to lose weight, and then the rest of us who are all exposed to these chemicals as well. So we will be, oop, Craig, I can't advance for some reason. Oh, here we go. All right. Um, we will be dedicating an entire webinar to these two products because they are phenomenal. So I want you to stay tuned because tonight we're just going to talk about detox, build, and balance. But in the meantime, I want you to educate anybody that will listen to you on why they need to detoxify, including those who have the brain fog, immune weaknesses, sleep issues. But remember that detox alone cannot ensure vital health. We also need to build our bodies because we need to get the good stuff in. We got to get the good stuff in like protein and fiber and antioxidants and vitamins and minerals and, and, and probiotics and all of those good things. And, and not only that, get the good stuff in, but we also need to support the detoxification organs because they too are under assault with this chemical exposure that we are all a part of. And that weak organ of detoxification is not going to perform well if we don't support it. So the liver, of course, I'm sure you know, is the key organ of detoxification in the body, uh, but also considerable amounts of detoxification occur in the brain, the lungs, the kidneys, the intestines, and actually the skin as well. Now, if that toxicant that is, we are exposed to is fat soluble, the detoxification usually begins with, with uh, converting or transforming that fat soluble compound into a water soluble compound. And how it does that is through enzymes that are in the liver. So imagine now you've got this weakened liver that needs some support, some building, and you're trying to detox. You don't have the enzymes necessary. So now you're breaking up these, these chemicals in the body, they're recirculating and the body gets into a mess. So we've got to detox, we've got to build, and we've got to balance. Now, a healing crisis we'll talk about that, is a temporary worsening of the symptoms that sometimes occurs when a person begins detoxification. So the common signs of the healing crisis can be, again, body aches, cramping, fatigue, headaches, feeling lightheaded, crabby, um, you're feeling weak, but remember, this could also be that during detoxification, Hopefully, someone will avoid caffeine or alcohol or sugar or nicotine, and that too can cause those symptoms. But regardless, we need to support these or organs of detoxification with additional nutrition. All right, let's see if I can do that. There we go. Now, think about this. If there's a deficiency in nutrients or you have a really high carbohydrate diet, which is low in protein, that liver enzyme production is decreased. And then the clearance of those toxicants is slowed in the body. So to say it another way, detoxification activity can be increased with additional protein, with minerals like calcium and magnesium and iron and zinc and things like that, but also the vitamins, the B complexes, the A's and things like that. And then also to support the liver, a lot of plants will also increase that enzymatic activity. And I'm sure you recognize some of these plants that are found in your products, such as the leafy greens or the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli or turmeric green tea, milk thistle, probiotics. I'm hoping that in one of our future uh, webinars, we can really uh, look at these plants individually and see why on earth are these so powerful in our bodies. So by using these superfoods, as we will call them, we're now going to assist in digestive health, 
our heart health, our immune health, create more energy in the body and a better metabolism. And speaking of metabolism, when a person is undergoing weight loss, what's the first thing they do? They, they cut their calorie consumption. Well, when you cut calorie consumption, how are you supposed to get all these nutrients in the body? So it's kind of a catch 22. You want to lose weight, you cut the calories, but now you're also cutting the nutrition. Well, if we can provide all the nutrients that we need with these superfoods, the body's going to respond with weight loss or weight management in a much better way. So I also want to say on a side note here, um, I was telling Craig before the webinar started that I've had a really difficult time forever drinking protein. It just doesn't work for me. Every time I drink a protein drink, my belly bloats up and I have really tried over the years. And I would, I will tell you honestly, at least two dozen different protein powders. So when I got your product, I tried it and I thought, oh dear, here I go again. I wonder if this one will work. Folks, this is an amazing product. I do the organic super protein and I put the super green juice together, shake it up, blends almost instantly. I drank it. I waited. And all I felt was just a, a real fullness, but also no bloating and just felt really good with it. So I'm hooked. I'm hooked on your protein, folks. So, wow, I'm really impressed with that. Okay, so we've talked about detox a little bit. We've talked about adding nutrients to support the body, to nourish it. So what's left? What's left is that we now have to balance that body. We have to, to balance the body. Um, with, we have to balance building and cleansing. We can't just cleanse, cleanse, cleanse. We have, to, we have to build, but we can't just build, build, build. We've got to cleanse. We have to balance blood sugar. We have to balance and maintain a healthy weight. So there's a lot of balancing that goes on in the body, but we also have to balance what's known as the endocannabinoid system, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. When the endocannabinoid system is imbalanced, scientists tell us that is the beginning of disease. That is how we develop disease, begin to develop disease over time. And according to the studies, this dysregulation of the endocannabinoid system has been shown uh, to play a role in almost all disease pathology that they have looked at. So what we're going to do is achieve our balance by using CBD on a daily basis. Now, this is the endocannabinoid. Some people say endocannabinoid. Otherwise, um, endo, I got to say it the other way, cannabinoid. Okay. It's always hard, but you can say either way, it's fine. But it is the most important system in your body. It is the master regulator. Now, endo means from within. So the our bodies actually produce these endocannabinoids, endo within, we produce them. And these endocannabinoids are responsible, responsible for regulating the functioning of our brain, of our body, our body temperature, how well we sleep, how much energy we have, how much pain we have, our pleasure and mood, our stress response, our immune function, our digestion. Now think about it, as we age, we produce less hormones, we produce less digestive uh, enzymes, and we also produce less of these endocannabinoids, which is why using a phytocannabinoid or plant cannabinoid is so important, especially as we age, but anyone can use this. It's amazing. I've, I've got so many people using CBD because it's just so good. And I can't wait to spend a whole webinar just explaining that new body system that was discovered when they were charting the human genome. Now, the three basic con uh, components of the endocannabinoid system are the receptors that are on our cell membranes, and we have them all over our bodies. We have the CB1 and CB2, and they, they know that they will probably find others as well. But these, these receptor sites um, that are on our cell membranes, they're hungry 
for these cannabinoids. They're hungry for them. So if our body is not producing enough, it's extremely beneficial to give them the, the plant form. Now, the second part of that uh, endocannabinoid system are the chemical keys. And you can kind of look at the picture and see what I'm talking about. The chemical keys that bind to that receptor site. And then the third is the enzymes that break down that chemical key once they've completed their task. Folks, we have trillions of these lock and key interactions every day trillions of them occur in our body, which is why we need to really balance that endocannabinoid system with our CBD. Now, the strengths of CBD. When our body is challenged by a virus, by a bacteria, by another type of a microbe, a toxin, a stressor, um, an injury, anything like that, our ECS fights to get everything back to normal as quickly as possible. And this is called the state of homeostasis. And homeostasis is just an equilibrium between the physiological processes in our body. So again, when we have a deficiency of endocannabinoids or a dysregulation of that entire system, it literally throws us off balance. And when we are off balance, we're going to develop diseases over time. And again, it bears repeating that this dysregulation of the endocannabinoid system has been shown to play a role in almost all disease pathology. So we can achieve a balance throughout our bodies by using CBD on a daily basis, if not more than one time a day as much as you need. So it's important to note, this is really important to note, is that the life of a red blood cell is about 100 to 120 days. So think about this, these old, tired, worn out cells that don't have the proper nutrition, that don't have everything our body needs, we've got to replace those. So when somebody says to me, well, I tried that and it didn't work for me. And I say, well, how long did you try it for? Well, I tried it for three days. Do you see the, see how that doesn't make any sense? We've got to get the full effect in about 120 days. I always urge my clients, my patients, you have to give it four months of your life. You have to try it for four months. And I tell them after the first month, you should be about maybe 25% of the way there you should really start to see some things happening in your body. By the second month, about 50% there. Now you're really starting to see, my goodness, I, I do have more energy. Oh my goodness, my, my joints do feel better. Third month, 75% improvement. And by the fourth month, now you know what that program can do for you. So you've replaced all those worn out red blood cells and now you've got really healthy red blood cells carrying oxygen throughout the body. So be patient and keep that in mind. All these products work together. As I mentioned before, you can't detox without building. You can't balance without supporting the endocannabinoid system. So now you understand why detox, build, and balance is so vitally important to your health and really how you can help so many people heal their bodies with these amazing, amazing products that you have with Touchstone Essentials. How about that, Craig? Does that work? That works. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, what a wonderful job. So fun to hear from you and to learn from you. And I'm excited to learn from you for a long time to come. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you invite people to come next time, the 27th. Definitely. What's the topic on the 27th, City? I think we're going a little bit uh, deeper into detox. Is that right? I, th I think we are. I can't remember, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You'll see it on the you'll see it on the uh, landing page. So go make sure you go there. But join us on the twenty seventh, and uh, we'll learn a little bit more from Cindy. And we'll see you in June, July, August, and then through the end of the year. So uh, again, make sure that you tell everybody. Bring them here on Thursday nights. These are also being recorded so that you'll be able to access them. But again, Cindy, thank you. We can't thank you enough for being here and 
for sharing your uh, your knowledge and expertise with us. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thanks again, Cindy. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.